Good morning, this is Bill from the Upside of Downsizing. It's Saturday morning and I'm flying solo right now. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see, we've put in several courses of cob and our goal is to work the cob up to this uh, point right here, which then we will then put a top coat of plaster over it to smooth it out and make, make it look nice. So what we're going to do is to after we get done with the cob up to this point, we're going to run chicken wire across on both, and that will then stabilize the wall, the, the cob mixture in, inside these studs, and give us also uh, another, another anchor point for the final plaster. So what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to put the chicken wire up now on both sides, and it's going to create a chamber, and we're going to put the cob inside that chamber, allowing us hopefully Hopefully, we'll be able to then do a greater amount per day than traditionally. As you can see from these layers, we're doing about four to six, seven or seven inches per day, and it's taking a while. So I'm hoping that with chicken wire here and chicken wire here, which we're going to do anyway, it'll create then enough holding uh, um, purchase point, if you will, going across that we can fill these chambers all the way up in one day. That would give us practically, for all practical purposes, four days worth of work that we could accomplish in one day. So I'm going to get out the chicken wire, use my hammer stapler, and staple this up. So for those of you who have noticed, I'm switching over to the T50 regular stapler. I can be more accurate with the location of the staplers. The hammer stapler was just missing too often. So I've got it trimmed off and now I'm just going to tuck this excess back behind the door frame. Because all of this will be cobbed. So I want to give this a chance. I want to give that a chance to uh, to grip inside this cob as well. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing on the inside.
Okay, so I've got that tacked up. I'm going to trim this off and push it back behind the door frame like I did on the other side. And then I'll continue with the other side of the wall. Okay, so the chicken wire's been applied. And of course I ran out of material. So I was only able to do the inside and outside of these first two bays. Otherwise the exterior is complete. We've gone around and used a lot of staples. We really want to make sure that the chicken wire stays flush or as tight to the two by fours as possible. So we went along with quite a few staples and then uh, afterwards Yvonne went back with the hammer and really tacked them in nice and tight. So we wrapped around this corner because this entire wall where the straw is is going to get earth and plaster and that earth and plaster is going to go up and over the two by four on this side as well. This area here also stand back this area here on the top is also going to have to get chicken wire starting from this bay wrapping around to the two by four the straw itself doesn't need chicken wire uh, it doesn't hurt if you use it it uh, we've actually been contemplating putting it up we're going to see how it works uh, with what we're doing right now but a lot of uh, applications do not use any chicken wire or deer netting at all so we'll see. Anyway, so what we're going to do now is mix up a batch of cob and begin fill, filling up those first two bays over here. And hopefully we'll be able to get it up to the top of the chicken wire. Keep your fingers crossed. Another batch of cob being mixed up. Right now we have one two gallon bucket of water and two five gallon buckets of sifted earth. To this we're going to add as much straw as we need to to bring it to the right proportions. Okay so we're calling it a day. We got the chicken wire up and the chicken wire did indeed add additional support as we added our layers of cob. Now you gotta understand, this is just one layer of chicken wire. Around the corner we have two layers. We did have a slight problem here where we overpacked it a little bit. It is bulging out a little, but it shouldn't be a problem when our second coat of plaster, earthen plaster goes on it. It'll level out, so I'm not concerned. Over here, you can see we were able to go up six, eight inches. But what, here we made, with the second layer of chicken wire, here we were able to go up 12 to 14 inches. And we probably could have gone up higher, but we were spreading it out, the, the mixture out today. We wanted to make sure that we uh, worked evenly around the perimeter of the building. We were able to close off a couple of the bays over the roof, over the, uh, the doorway is now closed off. And we, let's look at it from the inside. So here you can see the framing from the inside. It's being filled up. And there we go. This again from the inside without the second layer of chicken wire, but it's holding up nicely and forming a nice straight wall. Over here we have the second layer of chicken wire and it too is holding up nicely. So I think it's 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 something we're going to need anyway. The chicken wire is required to really bridge these uh, these studs together with the final plaster. So I think it's going to be a, work out well for us and be a good system. So we're cleaning up for the day, and we're going to head to town and buy some more supplies because we need chicken wire. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment box below. Yvonne is hiding around the corner because she wants to avoid the camera again. There she is. Hi, yeah. Okay, and uh, we will probably catch you on the next video Monday. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. And uh, if you want to share it, please feel free. Thanks again. This is Bill from the Upside of Downsizing saying see you later.